Morning, peeps. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Hopefully, um, you're all doing very, very well. I'm just looking at my computer, just making sure that this is bloody recording, unlike the other day where it didn't. Hopefully, this is recording with no issues. Um, yeah, hopefully, you're all doing very, very well. The sun is shining. I can't wait to go for a quick walk before I go to work. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget as well to like and share the vids. Remember, we are trying to get to um, 30,000 subscribers before September. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it with your help, obviously. I can't do it by myself. I can't buy subscribers, um, although I know a few people that might have. Um, yeah, so help me get there, peeps, if you can. Um, yesterday was crazy. <laughs> Don't you think? I think yesterday was crazy. I know some people are like, oh, it wasn't a surprise. Well, it doesn't mean it still isn't crazy. Like, even if you thought it was going to happen, it happening is still quite crazy. Eddie Hearn leaving Sky Sports after nine successful years. I was going to say relatively successful. No, there have been successful years. Um, it's a surprise. It is a surprise. I am. I'm shocked. Hence why I done a live yesterday, because it shocked me. I didn't expect it to happen. I expected Eddie to stay with Sky and for him to do what he's doing with zone globally, right? All those shows in Europe and the shows in America. But he's like, no, no, no. We're going to, you know, fully ditch Sky and go with DAZN. And look, I can't blame him. I'm not going to blame him. DAZN just simply offer more. Cha-ching! It's that simple, right? It's, it's that simple. Like, you know, we can break it down as to what's happened behind the scenes and all that shit that people like to do. Sometimes it just comes down to money. That's it. But look, it's been a very successful period between Matchroom and Sky. It was like very successful. I said on the live yesterday, I remember when, or what, sorry, British boxing was like prior, prior to that Matchroom link up. It was horrendous. It was horrendous. Yes, we had the one or two good fights a year. Apart from that, the Saturday night fights were a joke. A joke. So um, I think it's been a successful campaign. I really do. I mean, look at the shows they put on. I mean, sold out arenas. I mean, fucking sold out stadiums. Obviously, that's down to one man. But look, even prior to AJ, let's not forget, there was Carl Froch versus George Groves at Wembley. That kicked it all off. So there's been so many massive shows, massive moments, massive highs, and not too many lows. I do think the standard of the Saturday night cards have got weak. I think they have got pretty weak. Um, and the hope is now with the zone who are going to offer Eddie more money per show. Um, the hope is that those fight cards get a bit better for us, the fans. That's why I feel like fans win here. I don't, I don't see how us as a fan or any fan can step back and say, oh, this isn't good for us. No, no, it's very good for us. It's very good. And for a couple of reasons. Number one, the reason I just mentioned, right? Does are going to offer or give Eddie more money? We're hearing this is a, a nine-figure deal. So the minimum amount or minimum amount is $100 million. It's going to be way more than that. So look, he's going to have a lot of money to deal with per fight card, just like he's got in America. Um, so hopefully that means he can entice more fighters to come over. That means the cars look a bit thicker. That That's kind of what we want. And from another standpoint, if Sky are going to continue to cover boxing, and I hope they do, right? Because um, they've got the machine to really give boxing the push it needs. Hopefully what they do is don't do an exclusive deal with one promoter and kind of open it up to them all. So you give Steve Goodwin a couple of, you know, a couple of fight nights. Um, you give El Siesta a couple of fight nights. Um the World Boxing Super Series, Salons, you you know, and it's just, you give them opportunities and then they grow. That's that's how it works, right? Matram, prior to that deal with Sky, it's not like they had superstars. They got the deal with Sky. They remember, they started signing up everyone. They literally started fucking stealing Frank Warren's fighters. <laughs> so the idea is if Sky can somehow, you know, offer that to those guys I just mentioned, uh, they can in turn, start putting on some decent shows. That That's kind of, the, so again, that's why I say it's a win-win 
for all of us that cover the sport and watch the sport of boxing. That's what I think anyway. Um, now, I said this on the live yesterday and I'm pretty sure most of you know it. AJ hasn't signed a deal with the zone. So basically, like, the stable, the whole match from stable goes over. The only people that haven't gone over is AJ and Dillian White. Now, basically, all that means is that AJ is going to sign an exclusive deal with the zone, very similar to what Canelo signed, and so is Dillian White. Expect AJ's deal to be humongous. Humongous. Um, I don't expect it to be a 10 or 11 fight deal that Canelo got. I don't think he's going to sign something that long. I'm expecting like a five fight deal of something in and around 150 to 200 million pounds. That That is exactly what I expect. Dillian White, again, maybe a five fight deal, something small, it won't be that much, but um, he's going to sign his exclusive deal as well. And there might be more that have eventually joined it. I, I said yesterday that Conor Ben is maybe two or three fights away from becoming or was from becoming a pay-per-view star. Maybe he will sign a, 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 a contract like that as well. That's what's going to happen. With regards to price points, obviously, look, we pay 199 now for this zone app, right? For fights in America and Europe. It's not going to stay 199 people. I mean, for everyone that celebrate and think, oh, only 199. No, no, it will go up and it will go up very quickly. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if it goes up to a fiver, which is still, for me, take my money and then eventually 10 pounds. But if that means... Look, if, if £10 or even £15 means you get three or four good Saturday fight night cards and at the end you get a pay-per-view, so every single month there's a pay-per-view element, so a really big card and then three or four smaller ones, I think that's fair. I think that's fair in comparison to what we're getting now. I think it's fair. So I'm not too um, I'm not too upset about it. I'm not too upset at all. Um, Eddie is the biggest promoter in, in the world right now. Like boxing, he's obviously not bigger than Dana White. Boxing. Um, if you don't think or believe that, then I can't help you. Sorry, I can't. <laughs> I love doing that. <laughs> oh man, it's really nice coffee in it. Coffee's really good. It's not. I don't, I don't, is it bad for you? I don't even know, but it's really good. Yeah, Eddie's the biggest promoter in the world. Honestly, the biggest. I mean, he has the two biggest fighters in the world in AJ and Canelo. All right, and those are the two biggest people. Don't argue with me. Argue with yourself. Um, and now he's doing events all over the world. Yeah, I, I, Again, hopefully you watched the live yesterday, but if you didn't, I did say that hopefully this means that the zone really starts to kick things or get things going in Africa. But MTK Global trying to do their thing in Africa. I really hope the zone does because there are some good fighters in Africa. <clears throat> I was there for a couple of years and um, you're seeing good fighters, but these guys aren't... We, when I say they're not getting paid, it's it's embarrassing. The production of the shows wasn't too great as well. So you, you'd hope that the zone will go over, the production gets better and some of these fighters get paid. That, that's what you would hope. Um, I don't know how likely that is, but that's the hope. But yeah, look, Eddie... He's doing shows we know in Europe, right? Those shows in Uzbekistan and Italy, and France, I believe. Is it France? Well, that one that he does in Monaco, Monte Carlo. Obviously now in America and over here. Jeez. I mean, come on now. That's huge. That's huge. So, yeah, it was huge news. I thought I'd just sort of wrap up and talk about it again. Um, another thing. I heard we're going to have a look and see what's going on in a minute on sort of the boxing websites. But another thing I heard and I reached out to Mike Coppinger about 20 minutes ago to him for him. Sorry to come on my show today. He's not coming on my show today on TalkSport 2. He's coming on tomorrow at 430. So tune in if you want to listen to Mike Coppinger was um, Floyd Mayweather's return. Floyd Mayweather will come back. He's going to have this exhibition fight against Logan Paul. The Paul brothers have just killing it like not one of them but two of them one of them is fucking headlining Triller and doing all sorts of crazy numbers which I don't believe that 1.6 million but regardless he's still doing numbers the other one's gonna fight Floyd Mayweather on pay-per-view on Showtime how, how have they gone from fighting Deji and KSI 
honestly, no thing. How have they gone from fighting Deji and KSI to fighting Floyd Mayweather? I don't care if he's retired. O on pay-per-view, not YouTube, pay-per-view. And Ben Askren on this Triller pay-per-view platform. It's mad. Honestly, it's it's mad. It's crazy. It's mad. Good luck to them. Good luck. You, you know, you only get one go at this life. Enjoy it. Make as much money. Live it. And they, they clearly are doing that. But the problem for this, though, is that... Well, I'll say the problem is um, Teofimo Lopez against uh, Cambosos. Cambosos. I keep saying that, don't I? Um, is on the same day. Same day. I'm guessing around the same time. Now, Teofimo Lopez, all eyes would have been on him, I believe, on this Triller app. And he would have done decent numbers. Not crazy numbers, but he would have done decent numbers. Now, I mean, Floyd's back. Floyd's fighting Logan Paul. There's probably going to be fans there. That wins. That wins. How crazy that a proper boxing match, which Teofimo Lopez is in, is on an entertainment app called Triller. And what is an exhibition fight is actually being broadcast by Showtime. Go figure. Go figure. All right. Um, I don't know what news. Shit, I just realised I'm talking to this. I don't know what news there is, but... Um, Let's have a look and see if there is any news. Let me untangle this bloody laptop wire. There you go. All right, let's have a little butchers and see if there's anything to talk about before we shoot. Actually, I don't even have to shoot yet before we go for a walk. Um, do, 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 do. I see that... Um, Jamal Charlo, I think it is Jamal, right? He's added um, Mark Breland to his camp. So it's um, Breland and Ronnie Shields, which is, like, that, that's, a, that's a heavyweight like camp, you know? Good luck to him. Um, another thing, by the way, about this the zone um, situation is everyone's now like, what would be the dream team? Like, what 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 team do you want? I'll tell you now, Chris Lloyd is getting a number of mentions as the lead commentator. It's a big, it's a big move for them to give it to someone like Chris Lloyd. Again, I, I think Chris Lloyd should be involved 100%. Like, personally, for me, lead commentator. I'd, I'd, I wouldn't mind having Chris as lead commentator. Um, if he doesn't get that, though, I think he should definitely be in and around it somehow. Like, but on a commentary thing. I think he's that good. Um, I should have my own Ak and Barak. Is it Ak and Barak type show? I should be interview interviewing fighters from the. Like they should reach out to me and say, "Ade, we want you to talk to fighters from the green chair." That's what they should do. We'll see if they do it. I won't come cheap. <laughs> they got the money. They're paying people nine figures. I won't come cheap. Um, Josh Taylor says Tiafimo Lopez is not undisputed. He must fight Haney. He's undisputed, man. For me, it's undisputed. Well, because Haney's got the belt that was, yeah, he's undisputed. Although I do want to see it. It's a good fight. Good fight. I don't know if it's going to happen, but it's a good fight. Um, I did say that we are going to probably do the Bentley cash fight as a watch along. Might as well. I think it's a good little scrap, that one. Really is. Two unbeaten fighters. I'm down. I'm down. Um, uh, Jamal Herring says, I don't count out Shakur Stevenson fight, but Valdez would be the smart choice. I like that. He's, he's real. He's realistic. It would be the smart choice. It's, um, I like Valdez and I think we saw, look, by the way, it's a different Valdez. What I saw against Miguel Bichelle wasn't the same Valdez I saw against Scott Quigg. That could be maturity. That could be whatever. So as much as I think Shakur Stevenson's a tougher fight for Jamal Herring, just because of the speed. No, I do think Valdez ain't easy. Like Vald, I thought Miguel Bichelle was going to run through Valdez. So yeah. It's not easy, but we'll see. By the way, Lucas Brown. Lucas Brown. I've not watched it. I still haven't watched it. But he got um, knocked out in one by Paul Gallen, who's a former, I think, former rugby player. Um, 
it needs to stop now. Enough's enough with Lucas Brown. Like, it's funny because, like, there was a few boxers I, I saw that took the piss out of him getting knocked out. It's funny because when we do it, obviously, it's like, how dare you take the piss out? Boxers, fellow boxers are taking the piss out of him getting knocked out, which I don't like. Um, yeah, I think he sh they shouldn't book him to fight anymore. Like, his punch resistance is clearly gone. And he's just going to hurt himself. But because he's still somewhat of a name, especially um, down under, they might book him to get fights. Don't book him anymore. Like, enough is enough, man. It sh it doesn't even mean anything if you beat him. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, why are we booking Lu people like Lucas Brown when it means nothing? Like, I know um, Fabio Wardley was earmarked or rumoured to be fighting Lucas Brown. What would you get out of it? What would you get out of fighting Lucas Brown? So, yeah, hopefully no one books him to fight anymore. Um, uh, Eddie Hearn says, I don't know what Jamal Charlo is doing. Why not fight Demetrius Andrade? Eddie can't make this fight, can he? And I just, I just called him the biggest boxer promoter in the world. He seems not to be able to get Demetrius Andrade a fight. I mean, look, Andrade's got to help himself, right? Andrade's got to make himself a valuable commodity where people want to fight him. Is that the right term? Valuable commodity. But you know what I'm talking about. I, I don't think people... I, I, there's two things you want to fight someone for, right? Money and belts. Um, I don't think people of Jamal Charlo's ilk necessarily care about the WBO. And I don't think there's enough money in it for him. So what do you do? Unless Andre goads him. And he's tried to goad him. I've seen so many different... Um, like press conferences where Andrade's turned up and they've they've had their little run-ins. Yeah. I saw this the other day. We're going to end on this, actually. Should we end on this? Yeah, let's end on this. Um, yeah, might as well. Um, da -da -da, Evander Holyfield. Evander Holyfield McBride. Um, it's going to be a Triller co-main event. I think it might be on... I don't... I, I, it might be on the Teofimo Lopez fight card, you know. I, I think... Stop. We, we need to stop this now. This is... This is starting to get a bit silly. Like, I was hyped. I can't lie. I was hyped. I was on the bandwagon of Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. I was hyped. I was sold. I'm not... There's not one bit of me. One iota of me is sold for Evander Holyfield versus McBride. Did you see it? Did you see like the little press conference they did and McBride stood up and I'm just like, what is this granddad doing? And there's no doubt he is a granddad. That's not me taking the piss. He is a granddad. Like, what are we doing here? What, what, why, why is Triller even, like, who, who's tuning in for that? Like, why is Triller doing this? Like, if I'm McBride, McBride's going to take the fight because they're paying him some money. And I don't know what McBride's doing with his life right now, but they're paying him some money. He's probably thinking, I'll take it. Very much like when Ben Askren probably got the calls, like, I'll do it. And this is this is McBride. I have no interest in this fight. Like, <laughs> is it a warm-up for Evander Holyfield before Mike Tyson? Stop. You know, Cotto Marquez, stop. Oscar De La Hoya and his coked-up self coming back to fight some stop stop like I don't know what it is man I don't know like, even Floyd coming back to fight Logan Paul Floyd do you not have enough money but then Floyd's thinking you're gonna pay me 10 million or whatever he's gonna get paid it's gonna get Floyd's gonna get some money by the way to fight this YouTube kid <sniffs> done and by the way even that Floyd fight Floyd for some reason contractually cannot weigh more than 160 Logan Paul can't make weigh more than 190 Floyd is going to embarrass him. And everyone, you know what everyone's going to say in the lead up to it? Oh, but what if he catches Floyd? We've been saying that for 25 years. Floyd's going to embarrass him. Peace.